we're going to look at a special type of sequence in this video called an arithmetic sequence. And here is the definition of an arithmetic sequence. It says, it reads, the sequence u sub n is arithmetic if and only if u sub n plus 1 minus u sub n equals d for all positive integers n where d is a constant term called the common difference. Now let's look at what this really means. u sub n, u sub n plus 1. For instance, let's look at a number, u sub 1. If 1 is n, what would n sub 1 be? s equal d constant. If we let u, if we look at u sub 2, n is equal to 2. What's 2 plus 1? It's 3. So u sub 3 minus u sub 2 equals d. Now we could keep going like this, but what this means is that if we take two consecutive terms and find their difference, it has to be the same for every two consecutive terms. If we have that, it's arithmetic. Or if we know that it's arithmetic, we know that there's going to be a common difference. That's what this if and only if means. It means it goes both ways. Arithmetic implies common difference. Common difference implies arithmetic. So suppose the first term of an arithmetic sequence is u sub 1. And we have a common difference d. What would an expression for u sub 2 be? Well, we would take the first term and add on d. To get to u sub 3, we get from here to there. What are we doing? We're adding that common difference. So wouldn't u sub 3 really just be u sub 1 plus 2d? And then u sub 4 would be u sub 1 plus 3d. Look at what's happening with our term number and the coefficient in front of d. It's always one less. And noticing that pattern can allow us to write a general rule that will work for all arithmetic sequences. If we have an arithmetic sequence that has a first term called u sub 1 and a common difference called d, the general term, or nth term, can always be found fitting this pattern. u sub n is the first term plus n minus 1 times a common difference. So, we have a sequence, 2, 6, 10, 14. Show that this is arithmetic. So, how do we show something's arithmetic? We show that it has a common difference. So, we take any term and subtract the one before it. And if this is arithmetic, this should continue to be true. 10 minus 6, that's 4. 14 minus 10 is 4. So the common difference, d, is 4. We have just shown that it's arithmetic. There's a common difference. Find the formula for the general term. Now that might be tough, but knowing that it's arithmetic, it's actually very easy because we have that template from the previous slide. u sub n equals the first term, 2, plus n minus 1 times d, which is 4. And personally, I always like to simplify these. I like to distribute and correct my right terms. So I would give my rule as u sub n equals negative 2 plus 4 
ID isn't really going to care which way you give it unless they say in circle type four. I always like in circle, I'm a simple person. Find the 100th term of the sequence. Now we could continue adding four, adding four, adding four, adding four, pressing enter, 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 enter over and over and over in our calculator, but this rule affords us a very quick and efficient way to find the 100th term. We're looking for use of 100. Now this rule says I'm going to take negative 2 plus 4 times n. So 4 times 100. Plus 400. The 100th term use of 100 is equal to 200 to 98. Here's another good question. Is 357 or maybe 426 a member of the sequence? You could list out all the terms, but you don't need to. What we can do, this is a use of n value. Okay. If they're in the sequence, uh, an integer value, a positive integer value, we need to generate them in this group. So what we can do is we can use some algebra. 357 equals, and I'm going back to this rule here, negative 2 plus 4. And it is equal to eighty nine point seven five. Remember what term is this term? Can we have an eighty nine and three quarters term? No, we can't. So is P fifty seven in the sequence? No. How about four twenty six? Same idea. Why don't you solve this one, pause the video, and see what happens. All right, so solving this, we add 2, 428 equals 4n, divide by 4, n equals 107. So this is telling me that yes, this is in the sequence, and what's more, it's the 107th of the sequence. Having this rule, this explicit rule for the sequence, with each term, can let me do things very quickly and efficiently. So, we have some mystery sequence. It says, find K given that these three terms are consecutive terms of an arithmetic sequence. I remember the definition of arithmetic. There has to be a common difference. We have to be able to take any term and subtract the one that's before it and get that common difference. And it better be the same. So here's the first two terms. Here's the second and third term. These things have to be equal. This is something that we can solve. K minus 3K is negative 2K. Minus 1, remember this negative gets applied to both buttons there. Now we're solving. Get all the keys to one side. Problem, find the general term for an arithmetic sequence that has a second term equal to negative 7 and a seventh term equal to 33. Now we know that it's arithmetic. Right there, that tells us that probably we're going to be using this rule that we came up with. 
So let's plug our pieces in. Information tells me that the u sub n value is negative 7 when n is 2. Now that can simplify a little bit. 2 equals a sub 1 plus 1. And then it tells me that the seventh term is 33. So 33 equals the first term, which we don't know, plus 7 minus 1, which is 6, d. Now notice we have two equations, two variables. What we're able to do is take these and we have a system. We now have a system that we can solve. I'm going to subtract the second equation from the first one because that will make the A1s cancel out. A1 minus A1 is nothing. So now I've got 40 equals 5B divided by 5. B is What else do I need to write my rule? I need the first term to write my rule. We can find that by back substituting. We can take this B, plug it back into one of the original equations, and find that missing value, that first term. Negative 7 equals 81 plus 8. Eighty-one is negative 15. So my rule, my general term, a sub n equals negative 15 plus n minus 1 times, not b anymore, but 8. And we can simplify this. Negative 15 plus 8n minus 8. Negative 22 plus 8 is what this problem is going to be. Last example. Insert five numbers between these two so that all seven numbers make an arithmetic sequence. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I need five numbers to go in between them. And it makes a sequence. Well, okay. That means that this would be the first term. And two, three, four, five, six. This would be the seventh term. And one thing to know is it doesn't matter if you use u sub 1 or a sub 1 or q sub 1. The letter doesn't really matter. The ID uses a lot of u. But it doesn't matter. I mean, it's very really good. So, in order to find all the rest of these terms, I need to know my common difference. And I actually have all the information I need to figure that out. I'm going to take the seventh term. Equals the first term. Plus n minus 1 times the common difference. Notice the only thing I'm missing is the common difference. He is negative point four. I can fill in the rest of my number. We have 4.9 and 4.5. I'm getting smaller by 0.4 every time. Then 4.1, 3.7, 2 3.3, 2.9, and then one more subtraction of 0.4 gets me to 2.5. There are a lot of different ways that you can use 
this general rule for an arithmetic sequence. But note, in all of these problems, you did use that rule. Seeing the word arithmetic in a problem should tell you that you're probably going to be using the arithmetic rule. 